All right, guys, welcome back for episode number three of our Wallpaper AI series. And today we are going to focus on the app structure. In the last episode, we've set up Firebase. And today we're going to set up the Flutter files in order to have a very clean project respecting clean architecture. Uh, before we jump right into it, don't forget to subscribe and we can start right now. So as you remembered, uh, we've let the Flutter project pretty much as is last time with simply modifying the main function by making it asynchronous and calling a wait for initializing Firebase. And we've stopped right there. We have didn't move the main app widget. We've let it inside the main.dart file. And today we're going to create the whole architecture scheme in order to well, have a, a clean architecture friendly project. OK, so uh, you see the files on the left and the folders. Since our app is only going to be relevant for Android and iOS, in order to give ourselves some real estate, uh, we're going to remove the Linux uh, folder, the macOS folder, uh, the web folder, as well as the Windows folder. So it's a little bit more clear, right? And since our app is only relevant in those two platforms, there is no need to uh, have those folders uh, polluting the space, right? Uh, it's already going to be a bit complex, so stick with me, okay? So within the lib folder, it's where we'll have all of our uh, UI front-end and block logic, all right? And we are going to move all of the backend calls within another place that we will call packages. So at the root of your application, you're going to create a new folder that you will call packages. OK, and it's within this folder that we will create our repositories. We are going to create our user repository in this. We're going to create our chat GPT repository in this in this uh, folder. OK, and the main reason I'm separating it from the lib folder is actually for two reasons. The first reason being at the minute, we are developing the backend in Flutter right directly within our app. And perhaps later on, you would want to move your backend to an API type of services, moving everything to TypeScript and all this. And it's very well structured like this. So you can just take those um, functions that you've coded in Flutter and just move them to TypeScript within your API. Uh, you can as well have these packages, these repositories uh, completely separated within another GitHub repository. OK, so if you have a back end team that is working with a front end team, nobody is interacting really on the same files ever. And that's really a good thing, because otherwise you're going to have problems merging the code later on. OK, so here you can at the minute create the user repository repository. And we can as well create another folder uh, chat GPT repository. We're not going to create those repositories right now because it's for the next episode, but you'll see uh, they will come in really, really handy. So now we are going to focus on to the lib folder. OK, so at the minute we have just a main.dart file and we have our Firebase option.dart. And so I want to create some more things right here. So we're going to first start by creating some files. We're going to create a file that we will call app.dart. And we're going to create another file that we will call appview.dart. OK, so those files are the files that we will need in order to, let's say, have an entry point for our app. So we are going to have our main.dart file that is only going to contain our main function. OK, this uh, main app widget, which is ultimately the material app. OK, this one, we can just take that for, for now, just copy that thing and put it within the app view .dart file. OK, and we'll need to import materials in order to uh, make it work. And you might ask yourself, like, why not within the app.dart file? I'm going to come to that in just a second. But first, let's import within our uh, main um, .dart file, the app view .dart, but that's just temporary to not have an error, OK? Because we're not going to straight up move from the main uh, .dart file within the app view .dart file. The app .dart file is actually here because we will need what we are called multi repository providers for our app, OK? And those uh, multi repository providers, they are, uh, let's say, 
uh, providers for block that we will use throughout our entire app where we need access anywhere within our app and it's the authentication block for example the authentication block we need it to be such high level as here because no matter where we are within our app we need to know what type what state the authentication block is in and that's why we will have our uh, 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 repository provider uh, of type authentication block right here and this is actually going to redirect to my app view. But for now, we're just going to create a stateless widget in this, and we will call that my app. Okay. And for now, we can just here say that it's going to return my app view. Okay. Like this. And here in app view.dart, it's not main app, but we can call that my app view. Okay. And we can save that. And now here in our app.dart file, we're going to import appview.dart, okay, at a constant for now. And in the main.dart file, we are going to redirect to my app, okay? So not main app, but my app. Okay, and we can delete the import of, uh, of app view here. And we can save those files, okay? So we are not going to deal with the whole setup of all of those files at the minute. We'll do that in the next video. But I just want you to have those files ready for when we are starting setting up everything, okay? So our app is going to start here in our main.dart file. Then it's going to go onto the app.dart file where we will give our app all of the repository providers uh, that we'll need throughout the app. So that can be an authentication block, that can be a notification block or any kind of stuff that you know you'll need access no matter where you are within your app, okay? And then this app.dart is going to redirect to our appview.dart where we have our material app. And this is the really the entry point, let's say, of the, of the, of the app where we will say, well, if you are uh, authenticated using a block builder, we are redirecting you to home. If you're not, we're redirecting you to uh, the authentication page, okay? So at the minute, our, our, our uh, architecture looks like this. So that's right. So under the lib folder here, we're going to create a new folder that we will call, call source, okay? Like this. And here is basically where we will have all of our UI now, okay? Within this source folder. Okay, so within the source folder, you will have a few different folders. So you will have, uh, first you'll have a new folder that we will call blocks, okay? We'll have a new folder that we will call modules. All right, another folder that we will call, uh, let's say, that for now, let's see if that is enough, okay? So basically, we'll have a module right here and within modules, okay, you will have here, we'll have a new folder, auth, okay. We'll have, let's say, um, boom, okay. So at the minute, we're just gonna do that, okay, authentication and home, okay. And within those folders, okay, we'll have for the authentication, a new folder within it that we will call block, okay? Another folder that we will call views and another folder that we will call components or widgets, you really can decide, okay? And those folders here, okay, are the same for each module, okay? So here we have the auth module and we have the home module. Okay, and within the auth module, the authentication module, you have all of the block that will be related to the authentication. So sign in block, sign up block, we will put them here. Okay, all of the components, components, they are all of the widgets that we will share within our front end. So I'm thinking um, a text form field, right? You don't want to be coding the text form, form field every time that you need one if the UI is the same, okay? So you can create one custom text form field here in components, all right? And you can reuse and call that custom widget throughout your views, okay? And so what we want to do here is actually copy those three folders, and we're going to paste them 
under home because this architecture is common to all of the modules it's always how you are going to work okay is by having all of those folders and within the views for example here on the home a module you can create a new file that you can call home screen dot dart and i don't know how to type that is nothing new <laughs> sorry about that home screen dot dart okay and here within this home screen dot dart it's exactly where we will have let's say a stateless widget oh, doesn't work okay perfect let me try that again Okay, well, that doesn't work. It's, it's okay. It's where we have, uh, we're, we're going to have a stateless widget. Oh, I can just do that. If my VS code is broken, <laughs> instead of my widget here, we'll have home screen and we can say that. Okay. And save that and that. Oops. Yeah, oops hop, home screen. And we can import, uh, we can import material in the home screen dot dart. Perfect. Save that. Right. And you see, it's exactly the same architecture that we will have with, uh, uh, within all of our modules. OK. And you might wonder, why do I have a block uh, folder here uh, uh, above modules since we have all of those uh, blocks normally already within our different modules? Right. Well, it's only for me for clarity, because you, you take, for example, the authentication block. It's um, a block that will, okay, tell your, your app if your user is authenticated or not, but as well will carry the uh, custom user uh, from the database, okay, that you will need to access throughout your entire app. So you will very, very, very often find yourself doing something like this, context.read, okay? And here you will call authentication block, okay? And then you will say uh, dot state or something like this and user, okay? And this perhaps user, and then you want the email and you would find yourself do something like this, right? And that's pretty fine if you have your uh, your block within the uh, auth module the, or your authentication block within your, uh, your folder here in the uh, authentication module. But since it's something that's higher level, I like to have them uh, within higher and separated folders. Okay, that's the only reason really I am doing all of this is really a kind of, of separation for everything. Okay, so it's pretty much how we will do that at the minute. Uh, we will all the time increase our uh, number of modules, right? And we will have all of those folders every time. And the UI is always going to be in views, okay? And uh, all of our backend structure is going to be within the repositories that we'll have right here. So it's enough for this video. You've seen the type of architecture that we will use. In the next video, we will create the user repository. So you will have a better understanding of what I was talking about here. But basically, to give you a sneak peek, within the user repository, you'll have all of our, we'll have all of our custom user classes. For example, the sign in method, the sign out method, the sign up method, all of those stuff, they're going to be handled in this user repository away from the front end and the state management system okay so you don't have stuff that is intertwined and you don't understand a thing after uh, two months uh, not working on your app and you need to uh, update something so that's it for today don't forget to subscribe and i will see you very soon for uh, the next episode bye bye guys